I cannot believe this stuff is on the radio. I'm sorry. Okay, and I'm going to read it to you. And I want you to just listen to the words. Some of this, I'm going to cuss. I'm just going to repeat what it says. All right. Okay. It's a little long, so bear with me. It says... Bitch, you thirsty. Please grab a Sprite. My crypt's lurking. Don't die tonight. I just want to dance with you, baby. Just don't move too fast. I'm too crazy. Vince Staples is one of the most underrated artists going right now. It's gotten to the point with Vince Staples where more people are aware of his persona and how he is in interviews than his music. Like, a lot of people like his music, but all of his extracurricular activities, Abbott Elementary, the Netflix show, the interviews. Tom Cruise is underrated. Why? Because the mission was impossible. And he pulled it off. <laughs> Three times. He's really evolved as an artist over the years in a very exciting and interesting way. And his music has changed really drastically. And I don't think we talk about it enough at all. When did I discover Vince Staples? Vince Staples was one of the many artists in sort of the orbit of odd future. And for most of my early relationship with Vince, that was primarily how I knew him. It took a while for me to get into Vince Staples. I think I shifted into really liking his music with fun. That song is great. That song is my shiznit. I dig that song so much. I dig the album a lot. The album I think is underrated. Vince is an acquired taste. I saw Vince live at the Tyler tour. But Vince Staples is more than just like a sound bite. Bill Nye is the reason all these kids know how to proportion their lean in their beverage. He taught us these algorithms. Very underrated. Is he dead? This album really is indicative of how much he's grown as an artist over the years and how he's evolved. Close your eyes and swing. I usually skip over skits and interludes. But this is such a significant skit. This is such a significant interlude. It's the opening to the album. It seems very important to understanding the overall meaning and story of the album. There's one really big line in the skit. To live is to be like the nigga in the tree. Swinging from a tree, strange fruit, swinging. You're dead, your eyes are closed, you're swinging from the tree. It's so heavy, it's so heavy, it's so layered. There's so many different ways one could interpret it. Black and blue. So now we have the first proper musical track. And it's that very chill, very dreamy, very airy sound that Vince has embraced recently. It feels like we're reading Vince's diary. He's talking about struggling with, you know, being both famous and being from the streets, carrying that trauma of living in poverty, living in violence, and then getting out of that, not being able to let go of the street life, the street life, whatever the fuck that means. Government cheese, not exactly a party track by any means. It's a great song. It's a very good song. Love the title. Love the title so much. It, feels like it's weighed down with like some real meaning. Referencing like the trauma of having to eat government produced cheese. The first verse is just laden with so many metaphors about death, about pain, about loneliness, about the emptiness of life, right? About trying to find meaning. And the second verse is just this beautiful poem about <laughs> like one of his homies being locked up in prison and being like, you're having a great time, aren't you? You're having so much fun. You're famous. I saw you on ABC. I saw you on TV. And Vince is like, yeah, I'm so happy. Like he has to put on like a front for his homie because he's in prison, right? What would Vince look like being like, yeah, I'm a millionaire and I'm happy 
and people love me everywhere, but I'm fucking depressed still. Children's song. This is one of the more upbeat cuts on this one, and the lyrics are low key kind of funny. Don't play with my crib, play with your kids, bitch. It has that signature brutality that's a part of Vince Staples' brand at this point. They don't have black Amish people. They got black Amish, they have like Puerto Rican Amish. I will never be Amish. It's not my movement. You know, let them have that. We always try to steal some shit in America, man. We're taking people oil, we took Playstations. Brutal honesty and like, fuck off, leave me alone. Like, I don't want to talk to you. Shame on the devil. Just another fun, light dance joint. No deeper meaning, no heavy lyrics, nothing depressing. Play this at any party, it's so fun. I'm fucking joking. This song is depressing. <laughs> it just feels like I'm not supposed to be listening to this. It feels so intimate and so quiet. This feels like something I'm not supposed to be hearing. Lines like, I know women that'll give me pussy before they give me a hug. Usually a rapper would drop a line like that. It's like, oh, I get so many bitches. I get so much pussy. But Vince, it sounds like, oh, God, you just want someone to connect with. You just want someone to like talk to. <laughs> You're just alone. Etouffee. Okay, so this one is actually a dance song. This one is actually a fun song. This one is actually an uplifting song. You can play this one at the function. You can play this one at a party and not hurt the vibe at all. And it doesn't feel like this is the single, this is the party song, this is the song to get on TikTok. No, it just feels like it's a part of the tapestry of the album. It fits very well with the rest of the album. It doesn't feel jarring. It doesn't feel like it came out of nowhere. Liars. I usually skip over skits, but this skit feels really important. To pick this particular interview with Nikki Giovanni and James Baldwin, this very iconic interview. If I love you, I can't lie to you. Of course you can lie to me, and you will. If you love me and you're going off with Maddie, Someplace you're lying to me. Cause what the hell do I care about the truth? I care if you're there. But Billy Holiday say, hush now, don't explain. All right, I accept that. Of course, All of right, course I you lie to me. Cause I don't even want to care. What, what does the truth matter? And why are you gonna be truthful with me when you lie to everybody else? To pick out this particular clip, which is rather iconic in certain circles, where Giovanni is arguing with James Baldwin about how lying is an integral part of love. It feels like there's a bigger meaning behind it. Do I know what that bigger meaning is? I got some theories, I guess. You know, there's like multiple times on this album where Vince Staples is uncertain of a lover. The next song is about how he's uncertain of someone he loves, how the paranoia of the streets has held him back from truly trusting someone, thinking everyone who loves him is a liar in some way. And this Nikki Giovanni quote is like him saying, lying and loving are almost the same thing. You have to accept the fact that someone's going to deceive you, someone's going to lie to you when they're in love with you. Cause they have to, they have to lie to themselves, they have to lie to you, you have to lie to them. I'm getting really deep about this. Cause this album's really deep. Justin, some really impressive storytelling rap on this cut. Like it starts out so dreamy and so pretty with him meeting this girl and really hitting it off with this girl. And then at the end, he's about to kill her fucking cousin because <laughs> of the trauma that is like been imprinted on him. Radio, very heady song, very smart song. He's talking about the radio and how it played a big part in his life and how it is like ingrained in his DNA, right? The music he listened to on the radio on Big Boy in the Morning. And then the second verse, which is a very beautiful verse, is talking about music and love. How music helps him deal with heartbreak. Very smartly done, very beautifully written, very beautifully rendered. Pretty song. Nothing matters. I don't know what Vince Staples is going through, but he's going through something. I don't know what his history with romance is, but throughout this album, he's just going through it, man. 
He does so many different things on this track that are so impressive. For example, the Cassius Clay line is so layered and so just, there's so many different meanings within it. I just want the best for Vince Staples. I hope he's all right. I hope he's doing good. Little homies, he's talking about real shit, right? He's diving into the mindset of a gang banger. He's like showing what it's like inside of the head of someone who has to hustle every single day. And it has this driving beat that sort of mirrors the energy of someone trying to hustle every day. Someone who has to hustle every day. Someone who has to break the law. Someone who has to get around the law. Freeman, another very heavy song laden with meeting the title. Freeman. Of course, referencing what slaves would be called when they took or they earned or they bought their freedom. They'd be free men. One could surmise from the title that Vince is saying that he was a slave while he was on the streets. He was hustling, chasing after money, chasing after women. But thanks to this music shit, he has lifted himself up and now he's free. And the song is about that. The song is about what it means to be free today. Million dollar deals with Netflix, million dollar meetings, album sales, Grammys, right? Fame, women. Why won't the sun come out? A fascinating way to end the album. It's sort of a rebuttal of the album. It's just Santa Gold recounting a dream or vision she had and it ends with her directly criticizing one of Vince's lines. I'm not exactly sure why Vince is ending the album this way. I like it, it's interesting. Does it feel like kind of a cop out? Kinda sorta. Sorta, kinda, kinda sorta. You know, when Vince made this hard, hard shift in his sound, I was uncertain of it at first. I wasn't dubious of it. I wasn't suspicious of it. I was uncertain. I was uncertain of it. I was like, oh, he's like completely abandoning like the hard charging, really like loud West Coast sound for a more chill, you know, contemplative, very heady, jazzy, sad, depressing sound. Why? I don't know why he's doing this. Why is he why is he not making loud boom boom anymore? Why is he not making very loud, very abrasive music anymore? I like that sound. But ever since, you know, that last album with Kenny Beats, I'm growing to like it more. I'm growing to respect it more. Music is an outlet for Vince Staples. Music is how he expresses himself truly and honestly, which is so funny because it seems like he has no trouble expressing himself. People be hitting their animals and shit. And they wonder why pit bulls start eating motherfuckers. So like, okay, you keep kicking me, I'm gonna eat your fucking baby. All his interviews are so honest. They're so straightforward. He has no trouble expressing the ideas in his head. But then you listen to his songs and it's a completely different person. His music now, especially, now that he's a little more famous, now that he's a little more pop, is so different than his public persona. Do I miss the old Vince Staples? Of course. I miss the Vince Staples that made white women cry. <laughs> I miss the old Vince Staples, but I like the new Vince Staples too. I like the new Vince Staples a lot. I ain't never ran from nothing but the police. From the city where the skinny carry strong heat. Nerf side, Long Beach, Nerf side, Long Beach. So let's just encourage kids to run from the police because that's okay, right?